What's good everyone, OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going over my absolute top 10 best Nintendo Switch strategy RPGs. Last year, I actually made a list of about 17 strategy RPGs that I love, but I wanted to refine it after new games have came out and after I replayed some of the classics on the Nintendo Switch in order to form a better and more definitive list. But before we get into that, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, and click that notification bell to get my videos first. Now jumping in at number 10 is Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. What makes this game awesome is because it has really good graphics. On the Nintendo Switch, this is easily one of the best looking games. Mario and friends have never looked better when it comes to a strategy RPG setting, at least. It's got great presentation, the fonts, UI, everything that they've done with the sound effects, the crossing between the Rabbids franchise and Mario franchise is fantastic. It's got interesting gameplay mechanics too. I like some of the upgrades over Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle on the Nintendo Switch, how you can actually go up into the air with Beepo and shoot different enemies. They've done a lot of things with the powers and the skills in the game to evolve it past what we got in the first game. So there's really interesting gameplay elements and mechanics, really cool ways to navigate the maps that are presented to you as well. Really good upgrades as well. I think that upgrading in this game has definitely been bolstered quite a bit. Mario now has dual blasters each character has more of a unique weapon set for what they're trying to do in the game and their personality so i do like that about it there's tons of secrets lots of hidden locations lots of different places to kind of go back to after you get certain powers with beepo so it's pretty cool good sense of discovery as well there's also some great boss fights too some of them that will definitely make you frustrated and be like oh my gosh why they even do this but other really good boss fights as well now i'm not completely in love with the structure of the game and how they're doing the the whole different planets thing and how they actually made it to where it's more open-ended and not necessarily chapter based but i still feel that the game is great and that's why it sneaked in at number 10 on my list next up at number nine XCOM 2, and this game honestly could have been higher, but I'll say this, out of all the genres on the Nintendo Switch, the strategy RPG genre might be the most top heavy when it comes to games, because there's so many good strategy RPGs. Not a ton of them, but the ones that are really good are just really good. So this is a fantastic port over from PlayStation and Xbox. The graphics look very clean. The presentation is top notch. It is a great port. It's not a crusty port from other systems. System, so I do like that about the game. It's got an in-depth story that doesn't take itself too seriously, but then it does at the exact same time. And if you want to know the basis of Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope and these type of games, it definitely came from XCOM when it comes to the strategy RPG shooter out there. And they do a great job on the Nintendo Switch with this game. Now you have a bunch of different units to choose from, weapons and abilities. You can really mix and match your strategies. When I played through the game, I really liked how if I was getting bodied at some point, I could easily switch it up, change up things, change up my tactics, have a different angle or route that I go through things, or I can go through the level with more efficiency based on how I equipped my characters and my units. So I really love that about that game. It gives you multiple options and multiple ways to take down an enemy. I did like the tactical gameplay. It's really fun to go through and strategize. And while it's complex overall, it's not so complex to the point where you're going to get confused within menus and within the options and everything. There's just enough detail, just enough things in there to make you think, but at the same time, not overwhelm you unless you really want to get in depth with the gameplay. So I love that about XCOM. And I think that the style, the aliens, what's going on there is awesome. The only thing that I didn't like is that they didn't bring over XCOM 1 to the Nintendo Switch. That was the only problem for me, at least. I think it would have been dope if it was an XCOM 1 and 2 package put together it would have been awesome but that's not an indictment on xcom 2 it's just unfortunate that nintendo switch players won't be able to play xcom 1 as well but either way it's still good enough to make it in the top 10 number nine on my list number eight tactics ogre reborn a super nintendo to psp classic remastered with a bunch 
of awesome things added in. Gotta give Square Enix props on this one. I really enjoyed them bringing back this old game at this point. I think the PSP remaster or remake or re whatever you want to call it was 2010 or so, the original game on the Super Nintendo. So this is decades old at this point. And they did a great job with the strategy RPG gameplay. The story is really the highlight and the shining beacon of this game. There's so many different options and availability to you in terms of how you go about it. Replay value is a plenty with the story and just how you navigate through everything. There was some really crazy things, really sad things that happened in this game. And they do a great job of the writing and the storytelling in here. Considering how old it is at this point, I think that great writing is timeless and Tactics Ogre Reborn absolutely has that. I love the fact that there's multiple different party members to recruit, kind of mix and match in your crew in order to take down enemies more efficiently. You have different decisions and paths to take all over the place. Tons of quality of life improvements, which I think is the most important thing when you're bringing over a classic game. You have to get the graphics right. You have to get everything. But I feel that quality of life stuff is very important so people just don't get tired because there's a lot of things that wasn't available or that developers didn't think about back then. And people now could actually play it and it'll be easier or a bit better to play. So I love the quality of life improvements over the original games that they did bring over to this one. The combat options are really good. And I think the best thing about this is how you recruit the members members, how you get them, different side quests that you can do to get different party members, because if you want to do everything, this game is kind of crazy with its 100%, so I love the fact that there's lots of variety, and I think that's absolutely a common theme when you're talking about some of the best strategy RPGs out there, so I love the progression, love the leveling system, love how everything kind of came together with this game, and it looks so clean on the Nintendo Switch as well, I mean, if you love old school graphics, this is a nice delight for them to bring this back in that way because i know it's not easy people think it's super easy but it's not you don't want the game to look out of place on a big blown up 4k tv but it looks even better to me on a smaller screen with the nintendo switch oled so tactics ogre reborn makes the number eight on the list number seven valkyria chronicles 4 this is is awesome i cannot stop talking about valkyria chronicles in terms of how good this game is it makes it onto multiple lists of mine and for good reason the awesome water paint style visuals it just is a blend of like if bob ross was like hey man i'm gonna make a video game a strategy rpg video game and then he started painting and then yeah it's valkyria chronicles 4 so i love the art style in this game it's got a unique combat blend i think that when i first played this game I was kind of blown away on how many different genres of strategy RPG or tactical games that they kind of put into one here. And they do it very efficiently with this game. They kind of know exactly what players are looking for because it's the fourth game in the series. So it pretty much has super high marks for every little thing with the tactical gameplay within the Valkyria Chronicles franchise. The cover, movement restrictions, offensive and defensive counter strategies, all of that is fine tuned to the T. And I just love love the way that Valkyria Chronicles 4 does its combat. It's really fun. Upgrading, leveling was all great. The map layout and how they actually have certain strategies if you have characters in like with your tanks and your anti-tank units and your infantry, you can really do some awesome things in this game, especially if you're playing on the harder difficulties. I love that about it when they start mixing in the boss battles and everything. It gets really difficult, but at the same time, very fun to go through. Now, if you factor in all the DLC, how the story Stories connect and all the different things that you can do. Valkyria Chronicles 4 is easily one of the best games on the Nintendo Switch and one of the best strategy RPGs as well. And that's why it makes it number seven on my list. Number six, Valkyria Chronicles. Yes, the original is a little bit higher than the sequel. And honestly, guys, it could be easily the other way around or both of these games higher up on the list. But let me give you guys the reason why I like Valkyria Chronicles a little bit more than Valkyria Chronicles 4. Now, it's the start of it, right? There's this nostalgic thing that kind of ties me back a little bit to that. But it doesn't just stop there. I think that the characters, the story, and how they introduce the combat combat with the maps in this game now Valkyria Chronicles 4 is a bit more advanced but to me the simplicity in addition to how they did it in Valkyria Chronicles 1 is just awesome and timeless the vibe story characters all of that to me are the best in the franchise when it comes to the main characters and everything you can even have Vice, Ica, and Fina from Skies of Arcadia 
in the game as well as playable characters. Combat is simple, but at the same time gets more in depth. In addition to that, I like the leveling and the structure of Valkyria Chronicles 1 a bit more in terms of how it works with replaying chapters and how it actually works with leveling with individual units. It's also got fantastic music and boss fights. I love the music in the original game as well, more than the other games. So to me, Valkyria Chronicles 1 is still the best in the franchise, easily one of the best best strategy RPGs that I've ever played and actually underrated overall when the game originally came out on the PlayStation 3 and of course the re-release on the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch so if you have not played Valkyria Chronicles definitely check it out it's an awesome experience and a great strategy RPG and you will really enjoy this game especially with the story the story to me is what makes it the best in the series I loved how it started and how it finished and the vibe the tone everything was just perfect along with that innovative combat mechanics at the time that it came out coming in at number five Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle and yes I have the original game over the sequel of it very similar to how i have valkyria chronicles over valkyria chronicles 4 and the other games and here's the reason why i think this i think that it's not just a little bit better like when it comes to valkyria chronicles 1 to valkyria chronicles 4 i think that mario plus rabbit's kingdom battle is a lot better than sparks of hope and let me tell you the reason why so it takes place within the mushroom kingdom it takes place within those settings so immediately the vibe and the tone feels like more of a crossover between mario and rabbits compared to mario plus rabbit sparks of hope the inspired locations collecting coins the sound effects all that to me put more of a vibe of a great crossover and the level structure this is probably one of the biggest things and one of the biggest downgrades to me when it comes to the game the level structure with the set battles the set battles per chapter as you're going through with puzzles in between that structure is not only easier to play easier to follow easier to go through it makes the game feel more like a strategy rpg with the grid based battles as well it makes it feel like that and have its own identity compared to what sparks of hope did almost having like more of a running around and then kind of like valkyria chronicles but it didn't quite fit that style or that vibe for me when it comes down to it, i would have liked them to keep that structure as i played through mario plus rabbit's kingdom battle again i realized that that's a better structure for what they're trying to do with the combat in the game so i felt that that is just so much better and that's why i think mario plus rabbits is easily one of the best they take that XCOM, the fire emblem they kind of put that together and you have Mario and Rabbids. To me, that feels more natural and better than running around in a space and then you have an area that you can go to. And I feel that the battles also have more impact considering you can't just fight enemies over and over again you go through a structured set and if you want to replay or do challenges for extra coins you can do so or if you want to get a perfect rating on them by not losing any of your party members throughout the battle and by doing it in a certain amount of turns you can whereas sparks of hope kind of gets rid of that i think that these structural setup makes this a lot more fun to play through than sparks of hope and a better game overall i also feel that the puzzles feel a bit more rewarding in addition to having a bit better flow considering they are in between the chapters and structure of the game compared to open-ended areas and you might or might not have what you need to get through them and you're constantly doing loading screens with fighting enemies and constant loading screens with going from different planets to planets to me it felt like they ubisoftified too much of sparks of hope compared to the set structure and the gameplay of mario plus rabbit's kingdom battle so i think that's the reason why kingdom battle to me is still incredibly playable at this point today and to me a bit better experience overall as it's a a light version of fire emblem and xcom kind of put together all into one with its own unique capabilities and properties as well so mario plus rabbit's kingdom battle makes the number five on my list coming in at number four persona 5 tactica and this is one of the reasons why i wanted to do a remastered version of my list this game came out and it's easily one of the best strategy rpgs metacritic ratings don't really care about it when it comes to this game this is a phenomenal strategy RPG, and it shot up my list very fast and for good reason. 
the music and the story are fantastic specifically the music in this game is really good it's persona it's atlas we know the music was going to be lit but i was surprised at how much i really enjoyed the lyrics and i enjoyed the tone and the vibe of the music and story now the art style yes admittedly is not my favorite with the chibi-fied characters but I think it works for the type of game that this is and having a unique identity separate from Persona 5, Persona 5 Strikers. I would have liked for them to go with more of a normal Persona art style and switch that up a bit, but I understand where they're coming from and it makes sense for how small the battlefields are and the areas in the game. So overall, I wasn't too bothered by it. Gameplay is at its best. This is what they do really well. It's snappy, it's fast, fluid, full of replay value, challenges, different things to do. I really enjoyed going through and getting the best ratings on each one, doing the harder difficulties. It was great. Now, anybody can play it though. I mean, I just love the challenges and full sets of modes for the advanced players. Now, you have cool team up attacks, combos, movement options based on what character you're using, levels and structure makes it really fast to try to just get back in and do the best that you can in this game and i think that's where a strategy rpg really shines when you can easily get back into the game you can easily replay a level try different challenges try different things in order to get better or in order to get better rewards so you can take on harder missions love it it's underrated i think it's in the mid 70s to high 70s based on what platform you're on but i think that it's actually much better than the rating says it's a blast to play through and it checks all the boxes when it comes to a great strategy rpg i think the art style kind of hurt it more here than anything when it comes to what people think about the game but overall i can't sit here and say that it's not one of the best strategy rpgs on the system because it really is based off of everything that it does incredibly well when it comes to combat and everything now i know that it's a little bit simplistic at times it doesn't have the depth as some other strategy rpgs on this list but i think at the same time it's still just as fun to play at times considering what they do really well they really focused on that especially the team up attacks and different types of styles of strategy rpg gameplay in here so persona 5 tactica makes the number four on my list coming in at number three fire emblem engage and i understand this might not be the strongest story out of all the different strategy rpgs srpgs have a knack for having incredible stories not all the time but a lot of games do but to me it easily has the best graphics quality of life features in addition to ui in fire emblem history and i don't think it's really even close here it's got incredible fun gameplay that animates and looks really good i mean fire emblem has had good animations before we're going to talk about some other games and everything but to me how they really drew each character how they animated them to do different types of attacks their specials and supers it just looks super cool and adds a bit more to the fight in terms of the intensity that fire emblem is all about it's got a dope ring system that allows for near endless combinations and strategy i mean you have all these different emblem rings that you can choose from you can mix and match anybody can pretty much use any ring for the most part based off of what you want to do and that'll give them unique properties and abilities but you want to get the best strategy and the best rings per character that you can so it was really fun to mix and match and find out what the best is for each character or one of the better rings for each character and even based off the map that you're going on you might want to switch it up or give that to a different person and i think that there's some really busted combinations yunaka is really good in this game you pair that with corn and some of the smoke screen ability you'll pretty much never get hit at all but you need it because this game is hard man i played it on the hard classic mode or in the insanity or the hardest difficulty those are just crazy the difficulty just jumps up and you're definitely going to want to use busted combinations if you can except for like the weaver and rider everybody's using that like don't do that that's just cheating at this point but i feel that when you're playing through the game every move every time that you do something in there it feels impactful and i think that's what makes a strategy rpg really good is like when you know that when you finish the battle it was a good hard-fought battle to where you really had to use your brain and your mind to strategize to overwhelm the enemy and making sure that nobody dies in the process because if you're playing on classic those characters do not come back and like i said before story isn't the strongest compared to other fire emblem games but if you've played 
previous Fire Emblem games and are familiar with the characters, their settings, what happened to them, this will have some awesome moments with the Paralog chapters. And some of them are really sad. I mean, for me, Sigurd, it was just sad to hear him say and talk about different things. But at the same time, it'll make you reflect on why this series is so great. What makes it awesome? These are all the things, to me, that makes a good anniversary game. To me, this is more of a anniversary game than it is a mainline Fire Emblem game that, hey, here's the next story. It's not really that. But at the same time, it really speaks to me as a lifelong Fire Emblem fan at this point. So, to me... It's awesome. Love Fire Emblem Engage. I think it's incredible. Love the music. I still use it for some of my videos that I do on the channel. Sound design, effects, map layout, map structure, all really good as well. And I loved, loved, loved times three, the ending in the game. It was just super cool. Not going to spoil it for anybody that hasn't played it. But yeah, get all the way through. If you're a Fire Emblem fan, play through and get to that ending. And uh, yeah, it's also really hard too. The ending's like super hard, the last map. I was definitely frustrated with that map, but either way, I really enjoyed it. That's why Fire Emblem Engage makes it the number three on my list. Coming in at number two, Triangle Strategy. Square Enix strikes gold once again, and Triangle Strategy is pretty much everything that you'd want in a classic inspired yet modern strategy RPG. Allow me to explain that. The story, while a lot of talking, <laughs> that's something that we need to talk about, right? A lot of talking, a lot of different things. It helps flesh out the world building and politics in the game. This game has like real politics that greatly affect the characters, what they do. It gives you more reasoning and back into why what's happening like with the salt wars in the game and the trade and the economy. It's very believable that something like this or more like something like this does happen all the time or has happened. So I love that about the story, the world, and how they set everything up. It's got great quality of life features, which we will get back into, but the music, the music is so, so good. I think that one of the most important things with strategy RPGs, RPGs in general, is that you can't have bad music because you're going to be playing the game a lot. You're going to be in battles a lot. And some of the battles do take longer since you do have to make strategic decisions and it's turn-based. So if you have a bad theme or if you have bad music in the game where it's not catchy where it's not good it's going to make more of a negative i would say experience in the game triangle strategy has incredible music so even when you're getting cooked or when you can't figure out the next move at least you have some great music to listen to in the meantime now i love the decision making when it comes to the gameplay it's a huge fact the whole scales of conviction being able to gather resources being able to gather information in the towns before you make big decisions and seeing which way it's going to go based off of your party members is awesome it's the awesome democratic thing to do in terms of the voting process so i love that in this game and i think that the hd 2d graphics fit perfectly for this style it makes everything just shine and i think that it really takes you back right we talked about tactics ogre we talked about some of the old school strategy rpgs that have came before and i think that triangle strategy kind of like pays homage to all of that so i love that about the game now let's talk about those quality of life features let's get back to that a little bit so they have one thing in this game that is by far the best i would say quality of life feature for a strategy rpg it's called the encampment and in this encampment you can research the lore you can do side quests you can level up you can practice you have training missions there's all sorts of things that you can do buy items do whatever you need to do but you can use that at any point so even if you're in the start battle right the start battle for a current mission you can go into the encampment and do all sorts of stuff and then get right back into it you don't have to exit out and say want to quit the mission and do all this other stuff you can do it right before then so if you don't think that you're ready to take on the enemies that you're taking on or if you feel that you need to get a little bit stronger or need to maybe find out something or hey oh i remember there might have been a book that i didn't read about the lore or something like that you can do all of that right beforehand at any point encampment is such a great feature and it needs to be inside every single strategy rpg from now on at this point now the gameplay it's fun simplistic but fun at the same time the kudos system being able to get extra rewards extra spoils and points and experience for doing great strategy RPG moves, pincer attacks, hitting all enemies in a line, backstabs, double attacks, 
all that stuff really really is cool and makes you want to play strategic lots of content and replay value plus square enix did a surprise update to help flesh things out a little bit for the endings of certain things and other stuff and i didn't expect it because it was like a year plus after the game came out in 2022 so love the game love going through the endings are interesting based off of what you end up doing so you're going to be entertained all the way through till the end of the game and that's why honestly all the stuff that i said here combined with just the fantastic package that it all comes in i feel that triangle strategy is easily the second best strategy rpg could be number one as well on the nintendo switch and coming in at number one you guys know fire emblem three houses still at this point back in 2019 when this game released this game was an epic now not everybody feels that it's the best strategy rpg and that's okay but to me there's a number of reasons why it is let's go down the lengthy list awesome story with three paths to take there's still a lot of you guys that have not played this game this needs to be the reason why you play it these awesome paths with these different characters and finding out what happens with each one and the different variabilities within what path you actually end up taking and what path you take within the path that you take with these three different characters or these three different campaigns or who you decide to ally with is really good now you've got incredible music some of the best strategy rpg rpg video game music ever is in fire emblem three houses honestly i think it's that good with its battle themes and its remixes and it's just tone and style is just incredible it's a shame that it did not win more uh, music or more awards for that but i think that the performance of the game is part of that right it doesn't necessarily run the best or look the best graphically so sometimes that turns people off to it but i will say that the models like the character models are really well done and it's into the anime cutscenes are really cool whenever they pop up your eyes are like glued to what is happening on screen and i will say this the voice acting is incredibly good especially with my boy claude from the golden deer yo shout outs because the voice acting in this game is really good and it has a ton of voice dialogue you will not find a lot of stuff that isn't voiced so for those who like to have completely voiced games with their rpgs this game has it now the main character byleth has a dope role as the academy teacher and i kind of like that teaching structure and everything it's not my favorite when it comes to fire emblem games in terms of structure but i do think that the calendar system works well for being a teacher and the academy and going through the flow of the game and there's tons of characters to recruit from each house and they all have really unique properties finding the best characters from each house is like one of the fun things to do especially on your first playthrough because like you look at different characters you're like okay yeah that character is going to be awesome <laughs> like i need to get that person on my side overall so i love that about the game and honestly it's kind of like two games put into one outside of the campaigns which is like multiple i guess games but even within each campaign that you do it's like two of them in one you have the pre-war and then afterwards it was crazy because i thought the game was kind of getting towards the end and it's like oh no it's this whole second second half of the game it was like 40 hours for the first half another 40 hours for the second half for me as someone playing on the hard classic and getting cooked a lot and i had to restart missions and i had to really play strategically and carefully so it took longer than most people would take to get through the game but i loved it overall i thought it was really really good plus there's a whole dlc campaign with the ashen wolves that gets you new characters and different things and that's also incredibly difficult as well now the monastery it can be okay in terms of what you run around to and what you do in your free time and like the food or eating at the cafeterias getting ready prepped mission training all that stuff is cool but there's automated stuff if you don't want to deal with it you don't have to deal with it you can just automate most of the teaching and other things like that which i think is a nice quality of life touch fantastic gameplay cool strats based off of what house you pick and what characters you have i love the way that they were able to really kind of customize your strategies and your weapons and what you want to do per map because each map is different in terms of how you need to take to get to beating the boss or defeating all the enemies on there so i thought it was great with that 
I think that the class system is very well done leveling. I think it becomes very important. And I think that based off of what difficulty you're playing on, especially on the harder modes, non new game plus, you need to make sure that you really are equipped and ready to go because on the harder difficulties, you can't power level in the game. The calendar system is final. Like when the day goes by, the day goes by and uh, you can't sit there just power leveling and leveling up. So you have to make sure that you really spend your leveling and your points efficiently and effectively in the game, which puts stress on the player. But at the same time, that's what strategy RPGs are about. It's about playing tactical. And I love that. And I feel that out of all these games, Fire Emblem Three Houses does that the best when it comes down to it. So I felt that was an incredible gameplay addition or more like structure addition to the game. Although I do like power leveling in a lot of games, but I think that Fire Emblem Three Houses makes it to where it feels with the story. Everything kind of lines up to say, okay, hold up. You really want what Fire Emblem Three Houses is about? You've got to play it this type of way and use all the different tools at your disposal when it comes to the academy, when it comes to leveling and your classes, because they give you a lot of options there. So I thought it was awesome. And the ending, the ending, it's emotional. It's awesome. There's so many things that I could say about the ending, which I won't. I think I spent around 10 hours or so on the final boss, like the final stage. So that was fun on the hard classic mode. And the boss battles are also fun too, taking down some of the different bigger enemies or different bosses. I mean, sometimes it came down to like the last hit for me when it comes to like my last chance because Byleth would have got cooked if I didn't defeat them with this attack. So I loved everything about Fire Emblem Three Houses. I think it's the best strategy RPG on the Nintendo Switch and I think it was the best on my last list as well so it retains that spot but I do feel that Triangle Strategy, Fire Emblem, Engage, Persona 5, Tactica, a lot of these different games are also really good so I wanted to talk about those and give my definitive 2024 update here because there's not really many strategy RPGs coming that I know of so this might be the definitive list for the switch but all right guys that's gonna wrap it up for this video here what did you think about my top 10 best nintendo switch strategy rpgs any games that you felt should have been in the top 10 let me know in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and check out my other top best of nintendo switch list right here on screen thanks for watching we'll catch you guys for the next one peace